Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. This is series one. This is episode five. And just before we get into this, uh, before we get into this episode, just want to thank everybody for the support so far during this during this new series. I didn't know I was gonna go from what you guys are commenting and the likes and the views and whatnot. I can see that I can see that you guys are really really enjoying this content. So I just want to say thank you to everybody for um, coming on, watching me, and you know commenting and letting me know how much you enjoy it. Also, any anybody that I met, obviously I know I've met a few people again at work. It's crazy. It's absolutely mental at the minute. People are coming up to me and saying, you know, that they're enjoying the content. You know, I'm just a regular person, just like you. But it's um, like I say, it's amazing that you guys actually want to come and meet me and you know speak to me, speak to me in my workplace. So yeah, it's absolutely mental. But I, obviously, I, obviously I thank everybody that does it because it just makes me want to get out the camera and keep on recording, keep doing the series. We're nearly halfway through the series. Obviously, there's only 12 episodes, and then we go to series two. But you guys are incredible, and anyone that I do meet, honestly, thank you so much for coming up to me and actually taking the time out to come and see me and talk to me about my videos and about me and obviously I talk to you and whatnot. But yeah, just thank you and to people I met this week, thanks very much for your words. It meant a lot. Even my fam, even even people that I know, people that people that I work with, even that people that I work with, I watch them. Thank you to everybody that watches them. This series is going great, and it's because of you guys it's going so well. So yeah, thanks so much for letting me live out my dream. And uh, yeah, let's crack onto the episode. Today, you know what, it's mental because there's so much news to even to talk about because like, obviously now that we're, you know, getting to the peak of the summer now, um, then um, it's, it's just getting mental now, the transfer news that's coming out, it's every single day there's a new bit of news, but um, obviously we always talk Middlesbrough, we talk Middlesbrough last, that's what I always do, but first of all, there's like, there's a crazy bit of news and there's a slight change, this all won't be football today, I'm going to talk about something different in a little while, um, something that I am a big fan of, apart from football, we're going to talk about that, like obviously in a little bit. But for right now, we're going to talk about football. Um, the first bit of news that I've seen that obviously I want to bring up is the uh, Lacazette deal. Now, someone told me, um, who I, obviously I work with, that he signed for Arsenal for 44 million, and now I'm seeing that he hasn't actually signed for 44 million. Now it's gone up to like over 55 million to sign Lacazette. Is Lacazette worth over 55 million? For me, no, he's not. He's not worth. Over 55 million for Lacazette. Like, come on. Like, how much is Luis Suarez worth? You know what I mean? It's, I know he's. I know he's not after player Luis Suarez is, but what's his transfer value if Lacazette is 50, 50, 55 plus million? It's going to get a bit ridiculous now. And obviously, teams don't want to lose the big players, and that's why these players obviously get this big, massive, you know, transfer sum next to their name. But if it was me, I mean, I know Arsenal need a striker. Obviously. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't go 55 million. Obviously, if I was an Arsenal fan and I seen that we were linked with him for 55 million, obviously I'd be raving. But obviously, as I'm not one of them fans, I see it as a neutral. I just see it as will he live up to that potential? Will he live up to the 55 million plus pound status that he's got next to his name? I don't know because he's never played in the English league. Now you see it when players come from different countries and try and play the English game, they can't get used to it. You know what I mean? We see Salah. Obviously, he signed for Liverpool now. But when he was at Chelsea, for me. I didn't like him, I didn't rate him, because he just couldn't play the English game. And that's my worry, is when I see good players, sometimes they go to other teams, it matter, it's sometimes like English, other teams around the world, and they can't perfect what they had in, you know, in obviously in that league that they're used to. Obviously the French league is a lot different to the English league, so if he comes here, you know, he's going to have to adapt very, very quickly, and I know there's a lot of French players that came here and did well, uh, obviously the likes of Payet, but obviously he had to go back, uh, and then obviously Giroud, but obviously, Rue, I've seen again that he's linked with West Ham. Obviously, I've got a West Ham. Well, well, obviously West Ham. I've got a friend who supports West Ham, so he keeps me updated. But I've seen that I've seen that Giroud could be going to West Ham, um, and I think that's a good bit of business. Um, for me personally, I do like Andy Carroll, but the guy is so injury prone, it's unbelievable. So when he's out, who have they really got up front? They ain't really got a, you know, they ain't really got a goal scorer. I mean, Michael Antonio's not a striker, but he plays every single position for West Ham pretty much. For me, you bring in Giroud, and he's going to score your goals, and he's going to do you pretty well, and he's going to get you high, pretty bit high up the table. When Andy Carroll's obviously on form, Andy Carroll is special to watch because he's got something in him that he can just turn on. Whereas Giroud doesn't really get injured that much. And if he did go there, I think that'd be a good bit of business, business for West Ham because they are in need of a, obviously in need of a striker. As for Arsenal, they do need a striker. Although I say again, when Danny Welbeck's in on form, when he's not injured, he's just he's amazing to watch. I mean, uh, Manchester United season just gone. He was terrific against them, and there's numerous other games that he's been absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. He's come on and he's won Arsenal football matches. Now, for me, you know, Welbeck's good, 
But when Wales backs out, Sanchez has to muck in and whatnot. You get Lacazette, and you're going to play at a price tag. You need him to be, you know, you know, you need him to bring form with him because you can't be paying that much for a striker and not have him perform for you. I mean, it's a waste of money. I do apologise. I've got a bit of a cold, so I keep going all the time because I'm struggling at the minute. But, yeah, for Lacazette, I do rate him. I mean, I do, I mean, I do like the guy, I do. But I just, I just, I'm just worried that if he comes to England, will he be able to do what he's doing at the minute over in France? You know, I just hate to see good players come over to England or go to wherever they're going, and then you know, it's it kind of seems like the career kind of crumble because they can't quite adapt, and then they have to go back home, and that star player that they were sort of gets taken away from them. I mean, we've seen it with Fernando Torres. He came over to England. He was absolutely amazing at Liverpool, absolutely terrific player. Went to Chelsea, and he's made a mockery of him. But he was like, at Liverpool, he was like, he was like, he was like a god. He was absolutely incredible to watch. And I'm sure as a Liverpool fan, I'm sure he was amazing to watch. But he goes to Chelsea for that big price tag, 50 million, and he doesn't live up to it. So it's one of them. Lacazette goes. I hope he does well, and I hope you know I hope Arsenal get a pretty good striker in Lacazette. But if he doesn't do well, then you know what I mean. He's going to lose that status that he's got, which will be very, very disappointing. I'm also seeing that Chelsea um, want to go for Alexandro. Again, I don't, and it sounds weird, but I don't really know much about Alexandro. But what I do know is that he's a good, he's a good, he's a good left back. Um, and I think, as as for Chelsea, I don't know why they want to sign a left back. It might sound weird, but you know, you know, obviously Alonso, Alonso's there. Alonso's done done bits from last season. So why you want to go off and buy another left back? I get it's fit for cover, then it's for cover, but. It's weird. I mean, I don't know if they're doing it because obviously I see Bournemouth are going in for Ake. They're leading the chase. Obviously, Ake was on on loan last season to Bournemouth, and again he did he did bits at Bournemouth. Maybe that's why they're bringing him in. But do you really do you really want to see a player like Alexandro come in to Chelsea to sit on the bench? You see these players think, oh, these big these big names in England, let's go and play for them. But in reality, you're not really going to play for them. You're just going to sit on the bench. You may get the odd appearance here and there, but most times you're going to be sat on the bench. If I was a player. Money wouldn't. I mean, money talks. Yes, it does. But would you really want to sit on the bench every week and watch and watch some watch some other guy in your position? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do it person. But this is this is this is what players think of. So, yeah. But I mean, even for Ake, I think Ake, good young, good young defender. And he, to be fair, he, was, he did he did pretty well at Bournemouth, and I think he was pretty much liked there because he was in the team every week. So yeah, I mean, I do like Ake. But um, yeah, so I like him that much. I signed him on FIFA once. That's how much I like Ake. Um, but yeah, like I said, I do rate him. I think he's young. I think he can only get better. And uh, yeah, I think if Bournemouth get him, it's a great, it's a great signing. And I think he'll do bits for the next season and seasons to go on. But as for Alexandro, let's see where he ends up. If he ends up with Chelsea, I do want to see him get his place because uh, obviously again he's another big name. A lot of people know him. We know we have people know his qualities. But the last thing you want to see is a player of his sort of caliber come over here and sit on the bench and then just basically right away on the bench, nobody wants to see that, and that's just kind of how it goes now, you know, these big names sign for these big teams, but they don't really get a chance, so, yeah, but, you know, let's just see how these transfers pan out, um, but yeah, I mean, let's talk about the little thing that I wanted to change, um, and I don't know how many boxing fans we've got on this channel, now, I've never spoke about anything else on this channel, nothing, this is the first bit of news I'm coming across with, but I cannot help but talk about the big fights people have got, the money fight, you know, McGregor versus Mayweather, um, it's, uh, I mean, it's some, <laughs> you know what I mean, it's going to be some fight, that's for sure, Tyson Fury's come out and said he's going to knock him out under 40 seconds, and that's McGregor to knock Mayweather out in under 40 seconds, I love McGregor in an octagon, can he do it in a ring, I mean, obviously I'm going to be backing the Irishman 100%, but, you know, I really want to be confident for, uh, I really want to be confident for McGregor, but I just don't know if he's going to be able to do it, um, but yeah, I mean Mayweather, you know that guy's a, that guy's a genius in the ring. Will he even be able to touch him? I mean, I have seen that video. I think everybody's seen the video on Facebook and whatnot, where both he's where he's getting sparred and he just kind of get a punch in McGregor. Um, Mayweather is just unbelievable. Um, I mean, if he's doing it for the money, then he's a clever guy. He's getting paid a lot of money for this. But everybody knows McGregor's a fighter. McGregor likes to win. I mean, I hope he wins. I really do. <laughs> I hope he does, but. There's a bit inside of me that's saying he's going to get humiliated and I really don't want that to happen because I am a big, big fan of him in the octagon. Obviously, it's not going to change. When he gets into a ring, I'm going to be exactly the same. Like I said, we'll have to wait and see. You guys let me know who you think is going to win. Um, but obviously, I'm not going to bet on it or nothing. I'm just going to watch it. But 
It's going to be crazy. I mean, I'm still waiting to see the full card. I hope it's a good card. I know a lot of people are making a mockery of that fight and, you know, putting the jokes in there. But I really do hope it's a good card because, you know, if McGregor, if McGregor gets a few punches in and Mayweather actually plays out a few rounds, then who knows, it might go down to a good fight. But as for me, I just think it's I mean, it's a fight that, you know, it's obviously everyone's going to be tuned into it, but I don't know. It's just one of them for me. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to address that because this is this is something I wanted to talk about, and I didn't know how you guys would feel about me talking about other things apart from football. So that's why I kind of wanted to bring something else in. But it'll only be for a couple of episodes, I'm sure. Obviously, this is not going to become a boxing channel, as you can see. I'm I'm all football from behind me football. But yeah, I just wanted to bring that up and just because obviously I've seen it in the news and whatnot. You guys let me know who you think's going to win. Obviously, I am a McGregor fan, so you guys know exactly who I want to win. But yeah, I hope he does. I hope he does well. But you know, we have to hope and see him. To see how just how he gets on, to see how he comes on in a fight night. But obviously, I'd love to be there. But I'm hearing the tickets are absolutely like thousands and thousands of pounds. So I've got absolutely no hope of being in Vegas to watch that fight. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a good one. Um, back to the football. Um, let's talk Middlesbrough now. Obviously, we've got our new manager Gary Monk, which I'm happy about. And you guys in the comments seem pretty happy about Gary Monk coming instead of Pearson. You guys let me know what about. Well, obviously, you guys let me know what do you think of. All the transfers that are going on at the minute and all the staff that have just come in. Obviously, James Beattie's come in. For me, I love James Beattie. I loved him as a player. I didn't love it when he scored past Borough, but that's different now. Um, but as a as a player, I did like him, Beattie. And uh, obviously, Chris Wood Chris Wood worked with him last season at Leeds. And he got a few goals in. Should I say a few? He got, he got he, you know what I mean? He got a lot of goals in there for Leeds. So, yeah, I mean, I hope he can, I hope he, I hope he can work on Bamford and uh, Gusted. Obviously, we know Bamford is uh, obviously good in the Championship. I mean, we've seen that. Seeing that obviously season before we went up, obviously when we got to the final, and obviously it was a shame we got injured. But before that, that season, Bamford was on fire. He was absolutely fantastic. I just kind of hope that Bamford can get his shooting boots back to what he had that season, pump us up there for promotion. As for Rudy Gusted, now this guy, for me, I don't know how I feel on him. Um, I think he's a good like ball winner, like in the air and stuff like that. I mean, he always gets the ball, and you know he's not afraid to put his head and put his head where he can get hurt, but he can't score. For me, can't I, I've watched him, and the guy can't score goals. I mean, yes, okay, he's fair enough. He scored a few last season, but he, for me, he's just not prolific enough. Like, he can't just, he can't score. You know, he can't score all the time. Whereas, I think, I feel, I feel, I, whereas I've got confidence in Bamford, I feel like he'll be able to score no problem. Or beat he, if I mean, if you don't sign anyone else in striker wise, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed because get people say Christian Stewart is a striker and stuff like that. But I want to see, so I want to see a. Uh, I mean, Asan Belonga, should we say. Asan Belonga, let's talk about the transfer real quick. If he comes in and Beatty works for him, him and, him and Bamford say if they go to up front, then it could be a dream force. Until we go to the Premier League, can they do it in the Premier League? I would rather assign somebody that's got experience in the Premier League, doesn't mind dropping down to the Championship for a season, because you've got to make sure that we go up this season. Make him come down just for one season and say, look, we get us promoted and we get straight back up there again. I would rather assign someone who's played in the Premier League, but you know, maybe it's not week in, week out, because you know the players aren't going to come to us, because they're playing Premier League football, but someone that's been there, got the experience, and says, you know what, I'll come to you, I'll help you out, and, you know, you know, let's just, let's just try and get middles before it. That's what I want. Aston Belong, I'm not saying he won't do it for us, I'm not saying he won't be a very good striker for us, but has he ever played in the Premier League? Will he be able to do it for us in the Premier League? You know, I don't want to see us spending money and millions on the players for, for them to go to the Premier League and then be like, oh, Hold on, maybe if they sell him now, if they sell him back to the championship. If that's the plan, then make sure that make sure that you double your money, but you know I mean we'll have to wait and see. But I do like him. That's some belong I do. But can he do it in the Premier League if we go up? Obviously it's this season, that's not so I think too ahead of ourselves. I think him and Bamford if they come in, I think them two will do very, very well for us. Can I have faith in Bamford? I know Bamford Borough fans seeing it. Obviously not this season so much because obviously obviously he wasn't playing, um and his I mean, you could blame him on the confidence being low and whatnot and not really getting his chances. But yeah, I do feel like also he's getting played on the right wing. I've seen that. And that, and that was kind of frustrating because I thought Bamford, yes, he can play members out wide, but I want to see him through the middle. I feel like in the championship, if they play two up front and it is Bamford and Asan Belongo or Bamford and Gusted, make sure them two, you know, make sure James Beatty's just putting them through drills. You know, just make sure they've got the shooting boots on every single week. And I don't think we'll have a problem next season. I'm also seeing that Stuart Downing uh, has been told that he can leave. Gary Monk said he's not in his future plans. I hate to be horrible on a player, but I am pretty pleased that he said that because, you know, as you guys know, I'm just disappointed in Downing. 
I am. I mean, certainly the fact that maybe they don't like the person, I'm just disappointed. You know, he came from West Ham and he was fantastic. Again, my friend who's a West Ham fan was telling me how fantastic he was of a signing for us and, and uh, you know, how good he's going to be and he didn't live up to his expectation. I just kind of expected, you know what I mean? He came back to Middlesbrough and everyone knew about what he was doing when he when he was in Middlesbrough before he went away. And I was just really disappointed because when he before he came, I was excited. I'd seen what he'd done at Liverpool. I'd seen what he'd done at West Ham and I was excited to have down him back. But I was really disappointed, and now, now, now that I've seen him, that obviously, so, so now that Darwin could leave, it's disappointing because you think, you know, if you, maybe, he's, maybe you booked up your ideas when you played for us last season, the season before, you know what I mean? You maybe, he's, maybe, he's, maybe you he would have done pretty well, but you know, this is just how sometimes, this is how sometimes footballs goes, and it's disappointing to see a player leave, especially a local lad being told he can leave. But you know, he just, you know what I mean? He didn't really live with the expectation. I mean, we paid five million for Darwin. I don't think we got our five million pound worth, so it's a shame, but it is what it is. Um, also, we've also put a three million pound bid in. Could be more, could be less for Westwood from um, Sheffield Wednesday. Now, seeing that Connor Ripley, um, he's doesn't look like he's going on loan. He hasn't been shown the door by Monk. If he stays, I think he'd do pretty well. Obviously, he's been on two loan spells. And correct me if I'm wrong, but did he get play of the season at Oldham last season? I mean, I know he had a lot of clean sheets, and I thought the guy did pretty well at Oldham. Um, pretty good loan speller too, so yeah, I mean it'd be good to see him. Be good to see him, you know, you know, feature next season. Whether that be as be a goalkeeper as number two, but, but yeah, obviously I do like Ripley. I think he is a good goalkeeper. Obviously, I'm seeing seeing Dimi Constantopoulos. He signed a one year contract as well, so that gives us two options. And then obviously, if we get Westwood, that's three options. So that's even better. But I do fear. The only thing I fear is if we do sign Westwood, and we have Dimi. Ripley's, or it could go the way around, but I don't see Dimmy going out on loan for a season. I think he'd be in around the club. Will Ripley then go back out on loan and then borrow away until obviously until until the season after? <laughs> Who knows? But you know, I think Westwood. He's uh, he's shown that he's good at Sheffield Wednesday. He's shown his class at Wednesday. Um, so yeah, I think you get. It. I think I think if you get him, I think you know. Obviously, I'm gonna be very very happy. Um, I'm glad that Dimmy's obviously signed a one-year contract because um, you know I, I do I do enjoy watching him play for us. And obviously Ripley, I've not yet seen him play properly. I mean, last season, um, I seen him play at York for a little bit. Um, obviously we beat him six 0 I seen him play the season before that as well. Um, and to be fair, he didn't have a bad game, but obviously it's your only York, it's only a friendly. So yeah, to see him, to see him, obviously feature next season would be great. Um, but yeah, as for transfer news, uh, also a Dam Triore, I'm seeing a lot of, like, seeing a lot of like links towards that guy. Um, personally, I think his pace is going to be a, going to be a trouble cause next season. So if you get rid of him, who have we got pace-wise? Let me know in the comments. Who have we got pace-wise if he leaves in the midfield, on the wings? Victor Fisher, will he be leaving? Darun, obviously I know he's got pace, but will he be leaving? You know, there's all these links, and until we see anything cemented, obviously I know we can't comment, but we can comment on the links that are being in and around the club. Um, but I think Traore, I think he's one of the players that we need to keep a hold of. Yes, or came in out of... Had the best season last season. He got slaved and be able to cross the ball and whatnot. But you know, give the guy time. He's only, you know, I mean, he comes to Middlesbrough. He's trying to do well. You see him on the pitch. He's trying to give effort. Let's just get off his back a little bit and give him some time. At the end of the day, he's our pace next season on that wing. He's going to terrorise defences. And if he puts a decent ball in the box and someone's on the end of it, you know what I mean? He's going to score and that's a, and that's a goal and that could, could be potentially three points next season. So I think keep hold of him. I wouldn't sell him. Um, also, Ben Gibson, like this guy is just getting links all over the globe, <laughs> literally. Um, I'm seeing that Newcastle won him. That made me laugh for Newcastle monitoring, monitoring him. I thought, yeah, okay, good one. Also, I see that um, Stoke have bid, was it 12 million? That is such a laughable offer. Now, I, I think he's worth maybe he's double that, if not triple that. People may not agree with me, but that's what I just what I think. Um, but Gibson, I want him to stay, obviously, guys, how I'm, I'm, I'm much I love him. But yeah, that's just for me. Um, but yeah, I mean that's the transfer news. That's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think of the uh, of any of the transfers that I've said or anything that I've said. This has been episode five of Let's Start Football. I'll see you guys next Monday. Hope that butter.